Hey, it's Eldon back here. It's another episode of Crazy Dad's Garage. We're going to do another tool today, but we're going to do a little different here because my son Brian is home for the weekend. There's Brian. And uh, I showed him my tools that I'd been restoring, and he's like, That's cool. I said, Well, you want to do one? He said, Okay. So we're going to video Brian doing here. Show your hammer. This simple little hammer here so that he can learn on it. But uh, this is a very small ball peen hammer that's kind of rusty, crusty, nothing major, but it's got a reusable handle so we can clean that up and use that. So we're going to walk through this process of showing Brian how to polish the tool. So we'll flip the camera around and get started on it. Yeah, probably. Okay, here's Brian. We're going to clamp it in the vice so we can get the nail that was used for a wedge out of it that's going to be good so you probably want to use those let's see if you can yeah that's that can coming out <laughs> yeah oh that's right. out good all right here throw it away all right now take it out of the vice And now we're going to try to tap that off of there. So I'll try that. Let me hold it over there, over the bench. Wait, let's go where we can see that. There you go. Okay. First major accomplishment of the day. It's probably about the only major accomplishment we get done today. So let's, we're going to put it in. A vat of acid. Not acid. I don't even know what this stuff is. It's called evaporust. Right there. So drop that in there and then pour in just enough of it to cover it up. sit overnight actually because it takes that long for it to work so yeah. why don't we see what we can do with this handle while we've got it here so I think it's going to be reusable we'll do a little more shaping on it there but let's start now and just sand it and get it cleaned up good so Try that one, see what it does. Yeah. You know what? I actually have a better idea. Let's scrape it first. Just like this. Yeah. So that tends to. Yeah. Push down to the side. Oh. There you go. So, here, let me show you. Now you hold the camera, take the picture. So when we're doing it, we want to not go back and forth like this, but we want to take it and go like that and see how that's cleaning that off. Mm -hmm. And then we'll roll it back that way. And that will actually save us a lot of sanding if we do that. See? Yep. scraping it you don't want the blade straight up and down you want it tilted that way just a little bit back in a minute to show you this when he gets it all scraped. 
Okay, just wrapping it up here. What we're finding underneath all that finish is some really neat looking wood that has aged uh, and modeled in color and everything. It's going to look really cool when we get a finish on it. All right, show us what it looks like there. Got to get this extra light here, focus. But yeah, look at all the different colors in that wood. So that's just the natural patina of the wood. You got a few spots down here towards the end that have got some damage to them. There you go. We're going to probably sand those out as we get going, but kind of fun. We get to preserve the old handle without having to make a new one. All right, now let's do the sandpaper there. All right, we'll come back after we've got the whole thing sanded. Okay, he's about got the whole thing sanded. We've only used 220 grit paper on this, and I think it's going to be perfectly good for the finish we're going to put on it because we're going to put um, boiled linseed oil on it instead of trying to stain it or anything. So there you go. So we made one pass around the whole thing, and we kind of looked at it and decided that we could uh, get it a little bit smoother. So he's done a second pass with the same paper. And uh, that's a lot better. All right, now, if you look at the bottom end of it there, it's not cut straight across. We've been finding that on some of our other factory-made handles, so I'm going to show them how to flatten that out, so we get back to that next. All right, so we've got the handle wrapped in a cloth, a rag there, because we're going to put it in this vise and we don't want to damage it. Let's get this light out of the background. Okay. Other, other direction. We're going to put it in there sticking straight up. Other way. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> Tighten it enough where it'll hold it, but not damage the hammer. That'll probably work. Okay. Now let's find the right tool to fix this with. Just a second. Use. It's called a wood rasp. So it's a file with some very coarse teeth on it that's designed for filing wood. So, gonna, can you get over here where you can see it? So you can see the... How it's not flat. Yes. Okay, so it's high on this side, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you're gonna get two hands, put, turn it over. Let's use the flat side because we're working on a flat surface here. So put one hand out at the end of it out here. Hold the camera. Let me show you. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna hold something out here like this, so, so we can put some pressure on it while we do that. See. Oh, see what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that. Tear it up. So okay. you want to be careful not to go down over the edge. We can fix that. But. Get down and sight over it. And what does it look like? I, almost there. <laughs> okay, let's go look. Well, we took a little bit off of it, but it's still a little high over there. All right, take the camera again. Let me show you something. 
Okay. So when you're using a rasp or a file, if you go straight, it uh, it cuts one way, but if you turn it and move it across this way, it actually cuts a little better because of the way the teeth are built in. Oh. And then we're also going to want to round the thing over a little bit that way. So let's start that rounding process right now, like that, and then roll our, our file more flat. And we'll be able to move more of it. So what's happening is this is coming up this way and flattening off now. Maybe we want to come up this way and round it down a little bit. So we're going to try that. Teamwork. Sort of downing it. A little bit. So maybe you want to go from this direction and go that way. No, go across the handle that way. Not left-handed necessarily, but... Okay. Great photography skills, sir. Doing something. Still got a ways to go. Okay, stop for a second. That's pretty close there, actually. Um, all right. A bunch of edges off of there, so we'll play with that a little bit. Um, let's see, how do we want to do that? We could break out the sander, that would be the easiest thing to do. I don't know, let's hold on a minute here and regroup. Okay, so we've got Brian putting a taper on the edge where we got rid of those uh, splinters that we kicked off of it over here. So now he's carrying that around so it's uniform all the way around the edge of it. Okay, so that solved our problem there. Now, I could have done all of this with a power sander, but it's good to learn to do it with a tool. So, with a hand tool. All right, now we'll probably take the power sander and do the final smoothing up on that and this. And uh, I think I'm going to do that off camera because that's probably going to be a two-guy job the way we're going to do it here. All right, we'll be back when we get that done. All right, there we got it. So show us this end here real good. So we sanded that smooth with the sander and we really got all of the imperfections out of here and kind of rolled the whole thing over just a little bit. So it blends in there. So there we have it. Let's see the whole handle. That's all ready to put in the hammer except we're going to have to fit it down here so i think rather than risk uh getting stains and stuff on this let's wrap this up tonight by putting some linseed oil on it everything except up here where we're going to be working it okay okay what we got here is some boiled linseed oil and we're just gonna rub it on there and get plenty of it on let it soak in so show us what it does yeah, that's bringing out those colors. <laughs> All right.
let's uh, let's put a lot of it on there so it can soak in really good. You ready? Okay. Okay. Touch it. Yeah. It. Yeah. It'll wash off with soap and water. Look at the colors coming out in there. Isn't that cool? And some more. We want to put enough yeah. on there that it can soak in really good. Cool. I like the way that's looking. I'll do the end of it. You got the end really good? Mm -hmm. Can't see it. It's still... There you go. Sweet. All right. Does it need it anywhere else? That kind of got it, didn't it? Yeah. All right. That'll get us till we get the head out of the acid bath so we can clean it up. All righty. Be back in probably tomorrow when we pull that head out of the soak. I'm going to pull this uh, hammerhead out of uh, the evaporust. So I can get some other stuff soaking in there. We're going to go in and rinse it off, and then we'll have it ready for him to clean up tomorrow. All right. Well, Brian was here over Christmas vacation to help me work on this thing, and uh, with the snowstorms and everything, he had to head back early. So we're just going to go ahead and finish it up here, and I'll try to walk the, through the rest of the video as though I'm helping Brian do this. So we just pulled it out of the rust remover, washed the rust remover off of it. Um, it's got it 90% of the rust cleaned up on it. So what we're going to do now is hit the wire wheel here and uh, continue taking it off. And that'll clean it up. It'll get the rest of this paint off of it that's on there. And that'll let us move forward. So here we go. Well, there you go. That's halfway done. I'll clean up the rest of it off camera, but it's always fun when you find a brand name on them. So Champion Deermont, it looks like it says. But uh, you see the difference in how the sides are cleaning up there. But what I love about this Evaporust is it loosens up the bulk of it. So all I'm doing here is just taking the residue off of it. So we'll come back. I'll show you as soon as I get it all cleaned up here. All righty. There we go. Cleaned up very nicely. So what we're going to do now on this one, I don't think I'm going to polish anything in here because I want to preserve that... Uh, brand name there but i'm going to polish the face i think i'll do the round part here and then the ball on the end of it so what i'm not going to do now is use my flap disc to try to get those things smoothed up a little bit and uh, we'll start in on that and see where that takes us so Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so what I'm after here with this step is to get all of the little imperfections out of it, all the pits from uh, hammering on stuff and things like that. And then on this edge, I'm taking the casting marks out of it. So I think you've seen how that's done. One thing you want to do anytime you're doing something like this, it, whether it's a sander, a grinder, a file, whatever it is, when you have a rounded surface like that, you've got to keep the thing moving or you will develop flat spots in it. So on the face of it here, even that is not perfectly flat, so I'm pulling it across that so that I can keep that happening. And again here, I'm rolling it around it to try to keep that roundness to it. And it'll get even more touch and go when I get on the ball end of it here. So that's kind of what you got to do. I'm going to turn the camera off and finish this step up. And then we'll be back. So I've been, ended up using the file and some sandpaper quite a bit here to get this rounded off because the grinder was really leaving little tiny flats on it. But we rounded that there and I thought, you know what, while I've got the files out, I'm going to smooth these sides up too so they look a little more dressy than what they were. So I don't have to make them perfect, but I want to dress them up just a little bit. There's some some grinding streaks in here from the manufacturing process and they're pretty deep so we'll just uh, quickly go over it like this and see what we've got. It's surprising how much metal the file takes off how quickly on these. You wouldn't think it would be that way but you got to be careful here. We don't want to go through and file off of those manufacturing markings on there, the mean. Just about got it. I got one little mark right there, but you know what? It's working. Starting to take out the name, so I'm going to leave those at that point. So I'll flip it over. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll also, we'll do a little bit of smoothing up on the ends right where the handle goes in. And then we'll be ready to take it over to the grinder. All right. Got that smoothed up in there. It looks much better. Um, this side came out really nice. And then we went inside and took a round file and cleaned out that area in there. So the handle will slide in and out nice. Clean these up a little bit. So I think we're ready to go. Got uh, this uh, scotch Bright. it's called a light deburring wheel on there. So we're going to go after it with that for a little bit and see how it comes out. Oh yeah, that's working out nice. like it. All righty. I really polished that up. Nice. Took all the sanding and filing marks out of it and that's what we're after so we're going to do that on the other surfaces here and get that cleaned up so it's looking like that all over now not everybody has one of these i understand that there's other uh, wheels you can use you can get to this point by hand using different grits of sandpaper um, lots of different things like that but this is just the way i'm doing it i'm actually I'm lazy, so I'm trying to mechanize as much of it as I can instead of using hand sandpaper and stuff like that. But this is working out really good. Um, I got this from Eastwood probably 20 years ago, so I don't know. I assume they still make them, but we we'll just have to look around and see what you can find. All right, we'll be back on the next step. These...
surfaces here polished up real nice. These, you still see a lot of scratches in them. That's okay because I'm going to blue this area anyway. Same there, but uh, these surfaces that I wanted polished have polished up really pretty. I think we're going to be good there. So now our next step is going to be to actually start the polishing on the polishing wheel. So I'm going to get a wheel on here with some Triple E and we will start cleaning her up. Alrighty then, let's go. Get her turned on, put a little polish on it. Right. Just go to town on these surfaces. You actually don't spend a lot of time on this step. It goes pretty quick. not pretty there. Yeah, look at the shine coming off of that. Anyway, so we've got that done. Now we'll do one more step. And that is uh, switching out wheels and compounds and doing our final polish on it. So we'll be back in just a second. You'll notice I'm wearing gloves doing this. When you're doing this, a huge amount of friction being built up in here. So it gets, your part gets hot. I've had to go in and cool it in the sink several times already. Um, so just be aware, it's a good idea to wear gloves even if the weather's warm. Well, there you go. For my intents and purposes, that's plenty polished. Could you get better? Yeah, more perfect? Yeah, you could, but uh what I'm doing here doesn't make any difference and when you're learning perfectly okay not to get it all perfectly done There we go. That is plenty shiny for what we're going to be doing here. That really turned out cool. So our next step will be to get in here and blue the surfaces that we want blued. Then we'll be able to start fitting the handle. So we'll get over there. We'll get that done. And uh, show you how we do that process. Okay, you can see it all polished up and ready to go. Maybe that's a better shot than what you had at the other station we were at. So, I'm using some cold bluing solution. It's a nitric acid is what I've been told. I don't know, I'm no expert on that by any stretch of the imagination, but I have that. I have a simple artist paintbrush here, and uh, we're just going to get in it, get our brush soaked full, and then we'll start uh, painting it where we want it there. So it, you put it on, it takes just a few seconds to start working, and there's, there'll be spaces, places there where it doesn't uh, work the way it's supposed to so you just go back and kind of scrub on those a little bit i don't know if there's some residue on there that's not letting it work 
or what the deal is. But uh, by scrubbing on a little bit, it seems to solve the problem. And there you have it. It's turning a blue color. Now, if I get it up on these surfaces here, it doesn't matter because it actually buffs off really easily. So we're being careful with it, but we're not worried if it gets on that surface. I'll go through and do a final buffing on those areas anyway. Um, big thing is, is I want everything blued that I want blued um, at this stage of the game. I'm on the lookout for little shiny spots um, that show up and don't take the blue in correctly. I don't know if this is a different kind of steel or what, but it's actually working better than the last two or three pieces that I've done. <laughs> If you look closely, there's a little streak right there where it's not taken. So there, just by rubbing it, it makes it go away. So I don't know how well you're seeing this. I hope it's good enough to get a good picture of what we're doing. For me, this contrast in colors is what makes one of the things that makes these things so interesting. So I'm really glad we found this bluing process and I've been able to use it. I'm glad it's something as simple as this. Alright, I think we've got Oh, oh, there's a couple areas there that we still don't have. They show up very easily when you got that polished metal against the blue corrosion, actually. I think it's what it actually is. It's interesting that this is not the final step in the bluing process. You actually let this set for a little bit and we're going to go in and wash it off with water and uh, the final step is to rub it oil into it and the oil uh, brings out a shine in it because when we wash it this is all going to go to a there you go it's going to go to a color that looks similar to this where it's uh dried out and just looks kind of crusty and rusty and doesn't look all that great but uh, putting the oil on it brings out the luster of the blue so i'm going to go in now wash this off and dry it and okay there we have it um, all blued up and i just uh, took the buffing wheel off camera and rolled it this way and just rolled the thing around just to clean it up give it that does it gives it a uniform line along here and I like the look of that so at that point you can see the bluing does not stand out very much it's kind of just dull so we're going to take a little bit of uh, oil and I don't know, so far as I can tell, you can use just about any kind of oil to do this. I'm going to use some power steering fluid, and it doesn't take a whole lot. This step does a couple of things. Uh, we're going to oil the entire 
piece because what we're doing here is we're getting the bluing to stand out but we're also putting oil on it so that it can get into any pores in the metal and it's going to leave a little bit of a oily coating on it not enough to where you're really going to feel it much but it's enough to protect it from rusting again so we've got to that point um, i'm actually going to let that sit for several minutes and uh, we will then be ready to start fitting the handle so that'll be the next step that we'll come back and do is starting the process of fitting the handle okay so we've got the hammer head itself all done and i really like the way that turned out so the next thing you guys need to learn to do is how to fit a handle in here now this is where the old handle um, was in it but uh, when I pull that off a couple of things here so we still well let's start here so they used a nail for a wedge in here to wedge that thing in and it's a uh, really damaged this you can see we got a crack all the way down to here so we could reuse that but the other thing is this is not an original handle for this thing so let's see that was on there something like that we've got room to move this all the way down into that area so what i'm going to do i'm going to well and you also look here i think you can see that the cuts on this thing have been slightly offset to this side not so i'm going to make use of this area down here and try to get these shoulders more centered on the handle here so i'm going to do a little bit of drawing i will take the coping saw um, right here and i'll cut that um, i'll rough that out and then i'll get my rasp right here and i'll rough that shape out to where it's more like this and uh, then we'll come back here i'm not going to waste a bunch of time showing you that but i'm going to get this drawn on here I'll get myself a mark across here to determine about where I need to go. Let's just do that now. So I don't want to come down past this area right here where it starts to narrow down again. So probably really want to end up about in this area with the bottom of my um, hammer head. So we'll get ourselves a mark here. Just as a reference point and then what I'm going to do so this is um, carved in a little farther than that other side so I'm going to make myself a mark here that's about where I want it to be and then this one I'll try to get it in the same general area so I'm going to go make those cuts and uh, do a little bit of rough filing there and then I'll show you uh, what I've come up with at that point. Okay, so we've made some good progress here. Um, went ahead and um, got it down here to where I wanted it as far as being in the right position goes and then I cut that extra length off because uh, it was getting in the way of making this fit. So I've got that done, and I believe I'm at a point where this is going to go up in there pretty good. Um, I don't want it to where it slips easily down on there because then it won't be tight enough. So the next things I'm going to do, I'm going to try to carve this out a little better so that it fits the head here. And uh, taper these sharp shoulders off right there. And then we will take and cut ourselves a slit for the... Uh, tightening wedge to go in the end of it. So that's where I'm going to head right now. I will be back when I get that done. All right, we got her where I want it to be there. We are ready to put it on the hammer. So I'm going to do this. I've already got some glue down in the slot there. Yeah, we'll see how this works out. go got it all the way down tight there now we'll 
we'll see if we can get a wedge in there. That should be interesting. Okay, took the coping saw and opened that up just a little bit more in there. And I uh, was able to get it in that far, so that's better than nothing. And then it broke off. So that's where we're going to end up with it. Um, now I'm going to come back and smooth that up. I want to reshape these shoulders a little bit more so that they look more uh, more like a real hammer. All right. So get that shaped up, and uh, I think that's going to get us wrapped up here. So I'll get this cut off. I'll get those shaped off camera, and we'll come back and show you our end result on Brian's hammer. Okay. There we got it. Uh -huh. All finished up. I got those shoulders cut and sanded down there. Got the end cut off here and sanded that up a little bit. When I was doing these, I nicked up the bluing just a little bit around the edges, but that's the cool thing about this bluing solution is you just dabbed it back on there, wiped it off, and uh, then you oil it. And so I've used oil as my finish on the entire handle. So I just re-oiled that and oiled the new area. And we are done with Brian's hammer. It's really kind of a cool looking thing there, don't you think? So not that this was a good financial decision necessarily because you know you could go buy that hammer for a lot less money than uh, we spent in restoring it but the fun thing is what are the skills that Brian learned in this process you know he learned about how to refinish that piece of wood for the handle um, he learned about the process of getting rust off of things learned about what it takes to polish a piece of steel and all the work that he had to go through. Learned how to uh, use uh, gun bluing for decoration on the thing. And uh, the fitting of the handle. So there are lots of different skills that got learned there. And now, you know, you could take this. Brian can put that in his tool collection. He could hang it on his bedroom wall uh, just as a decoration or something. He could put it into a tool collection and use it as he uh, goes throughout his life if he wanted to it you know obviously you're going to damage things but uh, this depends on what your thought is it's a perfectly functional hammer now um, but it's also a decorative uh, piece of artwork really so there you go if you enjoyed this enjoyed watching brian learn how to do this we'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to like the video subscribe to the channel and uh, come back to see more of this kind of thing. We have a lot of fun doing it, and it's especially fun when we can teach the younger generation.